Hello everyone, welcome to the part 2 of the tutorial on how to create a carousel with multiple elements visible in the page. Yesterday we went ahead and created the markup, basically HTML and then the CSS and a little bit of a JavaScript to have uh, some sort of an interaction but we didn't finish it and I uh, promised we're gonna do another one for today to show you how to basically hide for example these elements that we have for navigation based on where we are in the carousel and we'll take it from then on. So let's get started. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is making sure that uh, initially when we see the carousel the previous button is hidden, right? So in order to do that I'm going to the CSS and then where we define the previous button over here I'm just going to set the display to be none, right? Just like that. Now it's no longer there, but also I want to make sure that I add a class like let's call it show which changes the display to block and I'm going to trigger this uh, in JavaScript. Basically when we go forward we want this to be visible, right? So one of the things I can do here is basically by the click of next I want to make sure that the uh, prev button that we have the reference up here to have, I'm going to say class list that add and then add show, right? Like that. So now if I press next, you'll see that it basically visualizes our previous button, uh, which is great. So now uh, in this example, we only have two sort of parts or sections or carousel pages, if you will. So this is the first one. When we press next, this is the last one. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure we add a little bit more elements to our page. So I'm going to copy the cart container over here and I'm going to paste, paste it multiple times, right? So that we have a bigger uh, section. So for example, here we have next and obviously here in my JavaScript, I hard coded the value to go with the to, 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 to the extent of a carousel width and now we want to be able to fix this I'm going to define um, a variable using let es6 let index equals to zero initially and on every uh, click on the next button I want to increase that by one right and then instead of hard coding it like this carousel width, I'm going to say index multiply by carousel width, right? Now, depending on the index, it's going to go ahead and, you know, scrolls all the way out. But also the problem now is that if I click again, you'll see that it goes on and on. And that's what we want to avoid. So there are many ways of avoiding this, right? So for example, one way is to make sure that we don't basically... Uh, let the trigger to happen uh, if we are on the last section of our carousel but in our example we want to hide this right uh, so how are we going to do that the way to do that is let me show you one thing real quick if you remember yesterday for the track we defined a display flex and this is literally the container of all the elements regardless of whether they are visible here or not in the page so if i go ahead and give it a border uh, one pixel solid and red just like that and making sure that i will remove the overflow hidden that i defined over here so i'm just going to comment it out real quick so now you can see that the track right now is looking like this this is the sort of width of our track which is not exactly what we want we want it to extend all the way and sort of have the same uh, width of the whole elements uh, uh, width uh, added to to, uh, to to themselves so this is not correct the way to fix it I can define display instead of flex I'm just gonna say inline flex right now you can see that it actually uh, encompasses all the elements that we have here regardless of whether uh, they are visible when I enable the overflow hidden here right which is exactly what we want so let's have this in mind setting this now I'm just gonna go ahead and log 
some of the values that I need to use. For example, one of the things I want to use is the track dot uh, offset width, right? So if I show you what happens, if I show the console over here, when I press next, you'll see that it says 3628. If I change it to flex, you'll see that when I press next, if I save it, when I press next, it's going to say 1280, which is the width of its parent container, right? But that is not what we want. We want it to be inline flex, just like that. The next thing uh, we have here is we basically set the transform, right? So if I console log this transform as well, so let's just say track.style.transform, let's uh, press next. You'll see that here we get the transform that gets applied to you know, the, the track element. So this is the translate that we applied. My, if I press again, you'll see that it's going to be translate uh, 2560 in the negative axis. So these are the two things that I'm going to use in order to identify whether I need to show the next or not. And how I'm going to do that is pretty simple. The way I'm going to handle it is I'm going to check something. So first and foremost, this is basically, I need to make sure that I get this value minus 200, uh, 2560 from this text that we have. In order to do that, I can use regular expressions. So I'm just going to say track, let's define a constant track translate. And this is going to be track.style.transform. This is the value that I get, which shows down here. And then I'm going to use regular expressions. And to do that, I'm just going to use a match function on this string because this is an a string and then I will define my regular expression and to be able to do that I'm just gonna do um, slash slash and then I would say either minus or plus and then also I'm interested in numerical values so 0 and 9 right so if I console log this right now you'll see what I get so if I do this I'm going to clear this now if I press next, you'll see that we get minus one, right? The reason being that what we are matching here is either minus or plus, and then one value between zero and one. And in our case, it's gonna be one. So to be able to fix that, we can use plus, which extends from one and more values. So now if I press next here, you'll see that we get our values, which is minus, 1280 uh, 1, uh, which is the value of the translate that we get and then I'm going to since this is an array as you can see I'm just going to get the first element in that array which denotes our translate value that we add over here the other way if we don't want to use this this is this was just to show you a little bit of how uh, you can use regular expressions to extract values from the uh, from this uh, style transform that we do. But we already have this value, so there is no reason to kind of do this complicated stuff over here. Sometimes people might think, okay, well, we should extract this value, but we already have the value over here, so we can use that. And the formula that I will check to hide this button over here is this. If uh, I have the full width of my track, so track dot offset width minus this amount that I have over here, right? So basically, I'm just going to put it in parentheses. If this is less than the carousel dot width, I already have defined the carousel width over here, which is the width of my carousel container. Because if you notice, if I just go ahead and let me just do this for now. But if I go ahead and console log this value, so console log every time I press next, of course, if I console log this value, you'll see what happens over here. Let me click clear this. So this is now 2348, which is the track offset width, the track with all the elements minus this amount of translate that we do on the track. If I press next again, 
you'll see that it becomes 1068 and it, and this is pretty much less than the width of our container which is 1280 this basically denotes that now it's a good time to hide this button right so what i can do is go in my css where i have defined my next button and then i will add a class called hide to it right and i'll set the display none right so if this condition happens I want to make sure that my next button, which I defined over here, the reference, class list dot add, and then I would like to hide it, right? So by adding the class height. So now if I press next, next, you'll see that it will go away. And I can go ahead and bring back the overflow hidden. And also what I can do is remove this border since we don't uh, need it any longer so now you can see that we have this and then the next time since this is the last page of our carousel it will hide it but now we want to fix the previous button it's pretty much the same so i'm going to copy not copy maybe i'm going to do this in the previous event handler when we click on the prev button i want to decrease the index like this and then i can easily choose this right i can use the same um basically command that i use to set this the transform so if i press next now if i press prev you can see that it works now the next thing we want to do is we, we want to make sure that when the index becomes zero here we want to again hide this and in order to do that i can add a check here if index was equal to is equal to zero I want to make sure that I do priv dot class list. Now I remove the class show that I added, right? So now I can go ahead. Let me close this. Now, if I press next, all right, next again. Now the next button is hidden. If I press priv, priv. Now both of the buttons are hidden. And in order to fix that, it's an easy fix because the same thing that we want to do, we want to check this uh, condition that we have, which we remove the hide button here. And it's actually pretty easy. We don't need to do that. Whenever we press previous, it means that we always going to have the next button. So I can go ahead and the, the same way I added this class list prev over here, I can actually go ahead and remove the hide class from my next button, right? Because whenever I press prev, I'm 100% sure that the next button should be visible. So now if I go here, it is removed. Now if I go previous, you can see that the button comes back and then we're gonna have this. So this is uh, pretty much how we can show and hide the buttons depending on which page of the carousel we are. Then I got some questions about how to use, uh, how to make it responsive, how to use media queries. And this is, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick of how to do it. And I'll let you decide on how you would like to set the sizing. So I'm going to go to this view now. As you can see right now, because the carousel's width is 1280 and the window width over here is not you will get this scroll that scroll bar down here which maybe we don't want to so how am i going to fix this the only way i'm going to fix it is fix it is using media query so i'm just going to say media screen and if my max width was 768 pixel which is pretty much where the mobile devices land on right in terms of width um so if the max width is 700, I'm just going to make sure that the carousel container has a class, has a width of, let's say, 80%, right? Just like that. So now, if you notice, if I go ahead and resize it until that, you'll see that we already have uh, two elements in our page. Obviously here you can go ahead and use the same media query to change the card container width and height to have for example one element here instead of two. But for now I just showed you how easily you can use media queries to set the width of 80% for the 
for the carousel container. Now we have a problem, right? Because if I press next, it's going to go ahead and translate it based on the carousel width we had initially, which is actually a bigger value, right? Which is 1280. And because I use this to kind of resize the window, in the real scenario, when somebody opens the window, the default, and it's, it's in mobile, for example, like this, they're going to already get the width 80%. So we don't need to actually do anything because this carousel width that we defined here will get that number. But since we use this resize in this prototype tool that we have, our online editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a resize event handler so we, to the window. So window add event listener, and then I'll just say resize. And then the second parameter is a function. And then I can easily use the same formula that I use, right? Because on resize, I want to get continuously the value of the width of the carousel container. And we need to change this from constant now to a variable, which is let in ES6. So now, if you notice, if I do this, if I press next, you'll see that it actually, you know, scrolls by the right amount of width of the carousel container. The same way we can do it, for example, we use the 768 mobile devices. Now for the tablet devices, it's actually easy. Uh, pretty much the width is 1,024. Uh, uh, 1, and let's just change it a little bit. Let's make it 85, just to show you how it makes sense, right? So now, you can see here we have the correct amount of scrolling that we need and the button gets hidden and if I press all the way to the zero you will see that the button gets hidden here as well. So you could see how easily using media queries we could kind of make this carousel responsive. Again, feel free to change the width of the card container based on your preference. Some people might not want to have two, for example, on mobile devices, but one. So you need to make sure that you set the correct width value, maybe not in pixel, again, in percentage. You have to play a little bit with it and every time check it on different devices and see if it actually fits your expectations, right? And then ultimately we use this uh, sort of condition to make sure that we hide uh, the next element and the previous ele element or button uh, in the page. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, this is pretty much what I really wanted to do in terms of carousel sliders. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use mouse events. So when you drag, you know, the, the sort of carousel starts uh, scrolling. And also we're going to next talk about how to use touch events so that it works on the mobile phone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please like and share this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I wish you a great day and night. See you next time and goodbye.